When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. So we were talking about delegation the other day and how hard it was to trust somebody else with a task, with any task, when you're first kind of going from being the only one in your company to adding people and how hard it is to separate, maybe not separate, but how hard it is to kind of let go of the, the idea that you do everything perfectly. So it's going to be detrimental if you let somebody else do it. Yeah, I mean, the main thing I struggled with, and, and it was one thing that I held on to for so long was um, doing sewer and water mains. Um, and I just didn't trust anybody else to run the machine, to not mess anything up, to whatever, right? And that led led me to a point where it was like, I'm not doing any work at all except for 20 days a year when we do sewer and water mains. Um, and that forced me to be like, Hey, I'm going to trust someone else to run the machine. Um, and it took a lot to get to that point. And then it was like, okay, I only trust me and him to run the machine. And then just this last week, I let another guy run a machine, right. To do a sewer and water main, because it's just like, at some point you're, you're going to over micromanage. Uh, to the point where you can't continue to scale. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that example of letting someone else use the excavator, you know, there's that fear that they're going to hit a line or they're going to not be paying attention to the other guy in the ditch and the ditch is going to fall in on him. And if you could just be there and be the one to be digging, then somehow in our minds that eliminates all those possibilities. But really those possibilities are still there and you're not always going to be the best one for every job. Like there are plenty of things in my business that I am not the best at. Uh, And I remember though, when I first started delegating anything, like just pulling measurements on a top out, it was the end of the world to me if they missed a measurement on a laboratory arm you know if it was just moved over a little bit it's in the wrong place oh it's into the world to me but at some point i <clears throat> got over the fear of letting somebody pull their own measurements on a top out i still had that fear on the rough end but i did let people eventually start pulling measurements on a rough end and do the the whole rough end themselves but it took a while for me to get used to that that they may pull a measurement wrong, but I've pulled a measurement wrong. I put a bathroom in somebody's living room one time because I, I just, I was in too big of a hurry and I got a call from my boss and he's like, Hey, the homeowner's standing there. He said the bathroom's in the total wrong spot. And what did I say? There's no way. Absolutely no way. There's no way. I I don't, that'd, that'd be dumb to do that. Like, and then I get over there and immediately I look and I can, I can tell by looking at the, the rough end, it's like, yeah, that, that toilet doesn't go there. I could see it from the road. You know, I just had that tunnel vision. <laughs> and sure enough, my boss was hand digging the, the bathroom up and moving it. And I was like, immediately I ran over there and grabbed the shovel. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like that was my mistake. So and I'm the one that thought that I can't let anybody do anything else because I'm the one that's going to do everything right. So just giving yourself the permission to let somebody else do something and understand that maybe they won't do it exactly the way you were going to do it. But the amount of time that it frees up, even if they mess something up and you have to go back and help fix something, 
you're still way ahead of the game time wise. And that person that you've entrusted is learning and learning and learning and whatever mistakes they make, hopefully they don't make them again and they learn from them and you're giving somebody the opportunity to be empowered. And we have to look at it like that because otherwise you're not going to give anybody a chance. You're just going to be stuck in your own way. Get out of the way. I don't have time to teach you this. We'll be faster if I just do it myself. And it was like that when we had our first helper. You remember? Yeah. And you spoke about that um, on a previous episode when we were talking about getting sued. How it's like, stuff's going to happen, man. It's just like, you can't control everything. And even if you were the one doing it, like, there's still something that can go wrong. Like, you think you check every nut and you tighten every fitting and you crimp every fitting, but it's like, at the end of the day, there's still stuff that can go wrong. Yeah. And when you move into getting out of the truck and letting someone else be the technician to go to the customer's house, you just have to give yourself permission to tolerate, like, Will the quality go down a little bit? Maybe because it's not you going out there and they're not getting the owner of the company. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have some customers that are used to you going out there. They want to talk to you, but through each stage of the game, I remember what it was like whenever I quit giving out my cell phone number because I was getting calls all hours of the night. And then we, ha I had an answering service to book for as a buffer between me and the my my friends, personal friends, and the ones that I didn't, not necessarily friends, but the people that had my number, customers. And I had to create that divide, not because I didn't ever want to talk to them. It's just that every time somebody would call after hours, it would be, hey, I'm sorry to bother you, but I got a quick question. So setting those boundaries and being able to delegate things so other people can do it, that answering service, did that um and then so i had pushback from customers when i stopped answering the phone and i stopped being so accessible and then i had pushback whenever it was not me that was going out to the job it was it was another technician oh we don't know we want tony we, we'll just wait and then eventually you you your customers will build trust in somebody else because Sometimes the conversation has to be had between you and a longtime customer that I wouldn't send this person out to your house if I didn't have complete confidence in them, right? So if you mm -hmm. have confidence in me, and I know that you want me to be the one to come out there, but I do have things that require my attention at the office that no longer afford me the, the luxury to come out and spend time with you face to face. But I, I promise you I'm taking care of you through the people that I hire. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm sending this person out there and I have complete confidence that this person is going to do the best job possible. And then you roll on. Yeah. And that's an important thing that you said. You do have things in the office that you have to take care of. Right. I mean, there's just certain things that as the business owner, Tony has to do. Um, and you can't be out there fixing Mrs. Jones's toilet and doing those things. So it's coming to that realization that I can't answer the phone and also pay all the bills and also do all the payroll and also whatever, right? And be the one that goes out and fixes Mrs. Jones' toilet. I, I just can't. There's not enough time in the day. And if what it really comes down to is what kind of life do you want to live, right? Because you could do all those things um and work a hundred hours a week or you could do what you're supposed to do and hire people to do everything else and work 40 hours a week right i mean that's what it comes down to right and you are creating boundaries along the way uh, okay so this is your job description you're responsible for this and I'm not going to step in unless there is a need for me to step in. And 
that's why there are key performance indicators. You, you have to be able to, once you create a job description for somebody, it's important to create a job description. And sometimes those job descriptions change because different people can do different things and you find out that they can either take on more of a responsibility or they go in a different direction and they can take on a responsibility over here. Um, and that's fine. But as long as those things that they are responsible for are clear and concise and cons consistent, you're in a much better position and you have to stick with it. You can't give somebody a responsibility and then breathe down their neck the whole time just to make sure. And I remember a, a specific example, like when we first went to service and and when you go completely service, when you've been in new construction and you've been in remodels and you've been in 24 hour service and you've been in commercial, when you start getting rid of those things and you start dialing in on your perfect customer or the perfect avatar of your customer, there's going to be a gap there. There's going to be a gap there in call volume because you're just, it's better for you not to go to those jobs than it is to go and not be efficient, have to wait on your money, not make as much money because they're asking you to do it for a cut rate, whatever. But there's going to be a gap there in your, in your call volume. So when there is that gap, <clears throat> You have to be able to um, handle that, you know. So going to service work and then the phone stops ringing. Shit, I forgot what I was talking about. The, uh, <laughs> when the phone stops ringing and you have somebody hired to answer the phone, I remember sitting on the other side of the the, the, the wall there in my office and every time the phone rang, I would kind of perk up and listen to what the CSR was saying. And when she'd hang up, I'd be like, well, "Did you book a Did you book a call? What was it? What What could have gone better that way?" And like, when you do that, that's micromanaging, right? And no one wants to work in an environment where that's going on. <laughs> I'm Absolutely, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Absolutely, but you, but you were wrong for that. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, and. Are you making the money you could be making with your home service business? Or is there money slipping through the cracks? My free calculator is here to show you what your business could truly be earning. Simply answer a few simple questions and instantly you'll see a tailored result based on decades of industry data and hundreds of home service businesses just like yours. Check it out now. It's straightforward, entirely free, and an essential step for any home service business looking to boost earnings without the guesswork. Go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash calculator and discover what your business could be, though should be making today. So we're all a work in progress and that was one of the, the, the hurdles mentally that I had to overcome. And if you ask my team in the office, I mean, sometimes those demons reemerge, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like now that I'm better at delegating things don't rear their ugly head, especially when things are slow, yeah. you know, and, and I have to do a, a good job of controlling that. And, and, and as a leader, you have to do a good job of controlling your emotions and controlling what you say during that time, because everybody wants the phone to ring. Everybody wants to be booking a job. Everybody wants to be, have a high average job ticket. Um, and when things are under a microscope, because it's slow, you can't act any different other than making corrections where they need to be made. Uh, and if you have a general manager, that should be talked about between you and your general manager. Yeah. But yeah, it's easy. I mean, yeah, I mean, micromanaging can be from every level. Like you talked about at the CSR level, but I could also sit there and click through Service Titan and say, hey, this, this PVC work is not up to our standard. This water heater install is not up to our standard. This gas work, oh, it looks like you strapped it every five feet instead of every four feet, you know, like. Yeah, I remember doing that. Just yeah. what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. 
Me too. Just out in the field, though, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Like out in the field, you, there there are things that we need to work on as leaders. In the office, there are things that we need to work on. But being able to delegate that those resp- <clears throat> responsibilities and and leave it alone. Like there was a quote, and I and I, I'm not going to try to to remember it, but it, the gist of it was a good leader is able to um, delegate responsibility and then leave the person alone while they carry that responsibility out. Mm. <laughs> That's a, that sounds so easy, and it sounds so eloquent, and it's so uplifting. But when you're in the middle of it, there's yeah. a lot. Of, there's a lot of friction there, and I think that something that defines a good relationship between you and your team is if you can have that friction. And then at the end of the day, when you all go home, you understand that we're all trying to get to a better place. We're all doing things for the the greater good. And um, I have things in my personality that where I fall short and everybody on my team has something good and something that, you know, they need to work on. Finding and hiring the right tech for your team can be challenging. Applicant Pro makes it simple and easy. Your personal Applicant Pro hiring professional will do the brunt of the work for you. Writing job ads that will get you maximum applicant exposure. Manage the advertising of your jobs to over 20 major and local job boards. Even a pre-hire risk assessment is included to ensure your candidates match the role expectations and your company values. To learn more about Applicant Pro and to take advantage of special discounts just for Coach's Corner listeners, go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash Applicant Pro. Then those things tend to to emerge um, and become bigger deals whenever everybody's under the gun. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden something changes and it's like, whatever. Oh, I had to dip into the savings or, oh, this, or the call volume's not where it needs to be, or you're not converting at the right percentage or your average ticket's low. Like those are the times that we become stressed. And it's like, that's when we start to micromanage people. Right. But what are you doing? What'd you say to her? Like you were saying, like your CSR, like phone's not ringing as much as it should be or could be. And you hear them on the phone with someone and then it's like, Oh, we didn't book a call. Why didn't we book a call? What do we need to do differently to book a call? The person said that could have, could have been different. Yeah. That's not the thing to do. No, not the time to make decisions in an emotion. If you're in an emotional state like that, it's not, it's not the best time to make decisions. Um, It's hard to keep a bird's eye view on things when you're, you feel like you need to, come in and handle a problem but well that's the importance of working through that process and trying to remove yourself from not from the day-to-day but from i don't know what the word is really for it but like the operations if you will right like booking the calls dispatching the calls all that kind of stuff right if you remove yourself from that, you can keep a better eye on the bird's eye view, like you said, yeah. rather than worrying about every single phone call, every single job, every single conversion. It's a lot easier to see the big picture. Yeah. And when you look at things on a day-to-day basis, as opposed to a monthly basis, you know your month not, may not start off great. And when you start comparing it to last year's month, that's a good comparison, but it's, that was last year. This is this year. There, there are, there are other expenses that, that come into play, but there are also, these are a whole different batch of jobs. So um, it's easy to kind of want to blame somebody, you know, in these situations, there's gotta be somebody to blame. And that's, uh, that's an emotional thing that comes in. You got somebody's, so it's, you got to be able to blame somebody. It can't just be because it's slow. Because just because it's slow, that that doesn't derail us from trying to achieve certain goals. Our goals are different this year than they were last year. So we have to push forward and we have to make it happen. And that can be 
Um, a tough pill to swallow when things aren't going exactly the way you want them to go, but you have a team that you, you, you're depending on and it's more important than ever to be a team in those situations and not play the blame game because I don't think anybody on, on your team, if you've got a good team wants to be in a slow season or a, a situation where things are under the microscope, the key performance indicators are being looked at very closely to see if there's some kind of adjustment that can be made. Nobody wants to be under that kind of scrutiny, even though key performance indicators are important. They're there for you to make conscious decisions and data-driven decisions But it's tough. It's tough when you have to make them. You know, it's good to just look at them and say, "Yeah, look at those. Look at those key performance indicators. They look great. Look how great everything looks. We're making yeah. all the money that we need to, and everything looks great. Conversion rates great. Booking rates great. Like, yeah, that'd be awesome if it was like that all the time. But it's not. Correct. And I think the tough the the toughest thing is discerning hey, this is a slow season versus uh, we're we're in trouble here, right? Like, it, it's tough to sit there and say, we're going to be fine. We're going to weather this storm. Um, or we got to let someone go or we got to let go of a truck or whatever it is, right? Like, those are the tough decisions that have to be made. And you can't make those if you're involved in micromanaging. Well, there's too much primer on that pipe. Or, <laughs> yeah. those, the, or those straps aren't in those straps aren't in the right alignment or it's not a perfectly straight line or whatever, right? Like, if you're micromanaging those things, you don't have time to look at it from the bird's eye view of, Hey, it's been a slow two weeks. It's fine. We had to we had to dip into the into the savings account a little bit. That that's okay. We're gonna next week's gonna turn around. And then it's also knowing your market, right? Like this time of year, right? Like this is when it starts to slow down for you a little bit, right? Those summer months aren't as busy. My summer months are crazy. I make about fifty percent of my yearly revenue during my summer months. So that's yeah. you know, halfway through May through halfway through August is where we make half of our money for the entire year. So yeah. if January or February or March or April are a little slow, that's okay. Cause we're, we're, we're coming around the bend, right? We're about to hit the halfway house, right? We're going to get a couple of drinks. We're going to get a couple of drinks at the halfway house and we're going to turn it around on the back nine. <laughs> like, you know, um, halfway house where I'm from is somebody recovering from an addiction. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They don't, they don't call it the halfway house at the golf course. No, man. Halfway what house. You call it? And I don't mean to laugh at that, but that's just so funny. Like I, the difference between a toboggan in, in oh, Mobile, yeah. New Jersey, but you call a halfway house, the, the turn at the golf course and a halfway house here is somebody coming out of rehab going to, well, they call that a halfway house here too, but what do they call it on the golf course? They just call it the turn or the clubhouse. The clubhouse. All right. So you're coming you're coming to the clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> and you're about to get a couple drinks and turn it around on the back nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you wouldn't be getting a couple drinks at the halfway house. You'd be just well, staying away from a couple drinks at the halfway house. Yeah, staying away from a couple. That's fine. <laughs> Look, but I worried I don't want to forget what I was gonna say. Speak, here. Speaking of wait, hang on. Speaking of a couple drinks. We're uh, we're about uh, twenty six hours away from having a couple drinks in the DR, my man. I know it, man. I can't wait. I, I'm 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 eager to get there and talk to everybody, and um, it's always a good time when we get to talk a little business, grow a little bit personally, and relax. You know, relax. Business is hard. Making decisions is hard. Um, but I'm looking forward to 
hanging out and relaxing a little bit. All right. And you had something you wanted to say before you forget it. The silver lining here, though, is that you do see things like that coming, meaning if something's going wrong and you're, you catch it, that's the silver lining. You wouldn't catch it if you were under the sink somewhere, like on a job. You would make more emotional decisions if you're in the day-to-day going out on jobs, worrying about the actual wrench turning, and you'd have no idea that your your company is either in the toilet or it's doing great or you need to put money back or you need to pull money out of the savings to to keep you afloat. You're not going to know any of that because you don't have time for any of that. So the silver lining in being able to delegate delegate as much as possible is that you can see all of the the machine, all the parts of the machine working, and you know what levers to pull. It may be too difficult to pull them because when you pull this lever, it may affect somebody's personal life. It may affect somebody's you know livelihood. Or you pull it and you you do what a leader does and be brutally honest with people, whether it's a you know somebody's performance, it could turn their life around and they can turn around turn around and make a good living. If they're doing something that they need to do differently, you have to be able to know that. And that's the silver lining by being able to look at the the machine, your company, the machine as a whole. Um, Otherwise, it's too late. You can find out things too late because you're not able to pay attention to them. And that's that's sad because delegation is something that should start fairly quickly when you go into business for yourself. Mm-hmm. I wish yeah, I you, could, you could definitely find out things too late. Like that time you were online for, you know, whatever ride it was in Disney. And they were like, hey, do you know that you owe us X amount of money? Oh, you're the like, supply house? Yeah. Oh, I was on the tram. I was on the tram coming from the parking lot. <laughs> and it's just like, if you were not in the day-to-day, right? Like, <laughs> you would have known that you had that bill due. You know? Yeah. But it happens. I known that I had the money to cover it. Because otherwise, you don't. And I didn't that at the time. I wasn't paying as I... I wasn't on a pay as you go basis. I was just like, ah, oh, well, yeah. I got 30 days, you know? Yeah. And I mean, to be fair to you, you were worried about this rough in and that top out and, you know, this service call and this commercial job, like you just, your, your head was in a million different places on top of being a husband and a father and all the things that go along with that. Yeah, and how how relaxing do you think that day at the park was after that conversation? Um, it was on my mind the rest of the day. Like, yep. How do I come up with this money now? The now the supply house knows I'm in Disney World, and what a what a jerk I look like if I can't pay the supply house, but I'm off in Disney World somewhere. You know? Yeah. I'm, oh, well, I well I had your money last week, but now yeah. Disney has it. Yeah. You, you'll have to call Orlando. But it's just, you know, it seems like seems like it's in the distant past. And, and that when that conversation happened, that was probably, I don't know, 14 or 15 years ago. But that, it did happen. And it was embarrassing. And that can happen if you don't make changes, if you don't delegate so you can get out and see the things, see the things going on in your business and know what to look for. Yeah. I mean, you said something really important. There is know what to look for, right? Yeah. You could listen to a million podcasts. You could listen to all these gurus and they're going to tell you about all these KPIs and all this stuff. But really, I mean, we've spoken about it before. It comes down to three things comes down to average job ticket, booking rate, and conversion rate. Like those are the three most important things for the day-to-day function of your business, right? Like, is there anything else that matters on a day-to-day basis other than those three? 
No, that's that's the big three. And you have to – there are a lot of things that contribute, especially to average job ticket, mm-hmm. you know, sales service process being one of them. But that's what you look at, average job ticket, booking rate, and conversion rate. Um, yeah, and you said something before about being a leader, um, and it's like – by looking at those three numbers, we can figure out how it is we address the problem that we have going on, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if my booking rate's down, I need to look at, okay, how are the calls going with my CSR? What are the, because you can have a booking rate of 60%, right? And your CSR is doing great and she's following the script and you're just getting bad calls, right? So now we're mm-hmm. talking about a marketing issue. What kind of leads are we getting? Or she could have a booking rate of 60% and you're getting great calls and she's not doing a good job booking them. Right. So it's like by figuring out what those num what's going on with those numbers, you do the same thing with conversion rate. Oh, it was a hot lead and my guy didn't follow the system or it was a cold lead and it was always going to lead to a diagnostic fee. Right. So, um, by figuring out what's going on with those three numbers, it can allow us to kind of plug the holes in our ship before we sink. But if you don't, if you don't figure out what's going on, you don't watch those numbers. You don't plug the holes. The ship will sink. The ship will most certainly sink because you need to, you need to have that bird's eye view that we're talking about of what's going on here, what's going on there and be able to fix those issues. Yeah. And, Everything can't be a big deal either. Like we're we're talking about when when it comes to technicians and CSRs, those are the big three things. But if if you don't have any perspective on what's really going on in your company because you just are in a truck every day and you're trying to run a business, whatever you're upset about is the big deal for the day, Mm -hmm. right? Like if something's making you mad, you're going to make that a big deal and you're going to most likely bring that to everybody's attention and say something out of an emotional state. And then you'll go off and you'll think about it. And then the next day, something else is going to be a big deal. And that sends a message like, shit, man, I can't do anything right for your technicians and the people that work for you. What's it going to be? I mean, is it, is it going to be every day I come in and there's something different that I need to work on or something different that I'm doing? Like, he said to work on this yesterday and now he's mad about this today. Like that's a real thing. Like you you can make your your team feel like they're not doing like, anything right at all. Yeah, like like you're never content. Yeah. Yesterday it was, "Hey, you need to keep your truck clean." And today it's, "Hey, you need to convert better." And the next day it's, "Hey, you're not doing this process right." Right? Like that's micromanagement. Yeah. And it's all a nutshell. Yeah. So delegation, even though it's hard and it seems like the easy thing to do would be to just tell the person to get out of the way. I can do this. It'll be faster if I just do it. Fight that temptation to do that. Actually invest in the lives of the people that you have employed and teach them. And realize that they are going to make mistakes. A lot like you made mistakes. And I made mistakes along the way. But your time will be exponentially more. You can have more time to do the things that are important. If you just stick with it and teach the people. And invest the people. And not blame the people every single time. And you'll have a lot better culture at your your business. Couldn't agree more. Hey, I'll see you in the DR in about 26 hours. Yep. I'll see you soon, my man. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below. And make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.